Hi, I'm Carrie Basson with the Kettering City Schools, and I am here with Ryan Lamb. Ryan is the director of our fall play, and we're going to tell you a little bit about the play and some of the unique things that um, have been put in place to be able to do this safely, but to also give our students the opportunities um, that they love in, in our theater department here. So welcome, Ryan. So great to have you here. Thank you, Carrie. So why don't we start with um, what, is, what is the fall play, the title of our fall play this year? The fall play this year is Vintage Hitchcock, a live radio play. So it's a radio version of three of Alfred Hitchcock's suspense films. It starts with The Lodger, and then Sabotage, and the second act is The 39 Steps. So talk us through kind of the process. Um, you, you've been doing um, the plays here at Fairmont for a long time, but uh, nobody is going to say that this is, is uh, a normal year. It's, it's very unusual. Um, talk us through kind of the process that you came up with, um, you know, kind of from a creative side and sort of a, a brainstorming side to, to come up with a way to be able to do this and to give our kids the opportunity to, to go forward. And as they say, the show must go on. Yes. Over the summer, we were thinking about the fall play and the winter play and if it would be possible to do a play. So we're super excited that we have the opportunity to present something and like you said, give the kids an opportunity to be on stage as we traditionally are. Uh, Darren and I met in early August and we were brainstorming and he said, I think I was thinking about doing a radio play and that just opened the floodgates. We did a radio play four years ago when the auditorium was under construction. I didn't remember that. So I had a few scripts on hand that I went back and reviewed, found this one, and we moved forward. Okay. And uh, kind of tell us, what, what, what are people going to see? What's the feel of this going to be? How, how does this work? And um, how, how did you kind of get the kids sort of excited about doing something a little bit different? Well, the kids were excited to see each other <laughs> sure. and just to be back in this facility and be on stage and be doing something other than Zooming all the time at mm -hmm. home. Um, we have the stage set up in, like a radio studio from the 1940s. So we have microphone stands set up on the stage, six feet apart. We have a sound effects table, a Foley table, where a lot of the sound effects will be. We have an announcer area and a big on-air sign above his head. Okay. And how did you kind of handle um, the audition process? Because as everybody knows, we're, we're still remote learning here in Kettering. So you didn't kind of have that captive audience of, of your 2,400 kids here that you could kind of put the word out that, hey, we're, we're going to move forward with this. How, how did you handle that auditioning um, process and, and how did that work? The teachers in the English department helped us put, get the word out. So we put together announcements and slideshows with information about auditions and what the show was about, and they shared them through their English classes and through their mm -hmm. Zoom calls. We followed some of the guidelines. We modified some of the guidelines that the marching band used to okay. keep the marching band running. Uh, we had uh, check-in stations and hand sanitizing stations. We brought students in one at a time into the auditorium. Uh, Mr. Gentry put arrow, taped arrows on the floor and X's of where to stand and one-way entrances and exits. So it was a logistical problem, but mm -hmm. we managed to make it work. Managed to make it work. Like, like we're doing with so many things right now, you managed to make it work. And so what, what has the kids' reaction been? How, how have they kind of embraced this um, kind of really unique but, but neat way of, of presenting our fall play? They've been great. Uh, they know that... Uh, this is a different year, but they're excited for the opportunity to be on stage. And they've been good at policing themselves. They'll distance each other out, and we've done warm-ups outside in the quad, mm -hmm. uh, trying to shout over the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> and they're helping each other put together costumes because we're trying to use as many of the students' own clothing as okay. possible so that we don't have a lot of... We don't have any costume changes during the show mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Okay. And tell us a little bit um, about kind of the, the um, makeup of your cast. What Are these um, people that we've probably seen before in plays? Did you get some new people, new kids that might have uh, been interested in doing something a little bit differently? Talk a little bit about that. We have a really nice blend of new faces and experienced thespians. We have, I want to say, four or five seniors. Okay. And we've got one freshman, 
We've got Wonderful. two or three sophomores and a handful of juniors. Our total cast and crew is 17 people. And the way that it's set up is half of them are in Act 1 and half of them are in Act 2. So again, to prevent mingling and keep mm -hmm. small groups as much as possible during the rehearsal process. So, so during rehearsal and during the play, there won't be a whole lot of kids kind of hanging out backstage together or these, those kind of things. Those are some of the protocols and, and some of the things you've put in place to make sure this can be done safely. Precisely. Okay. Um, for the first act, there are six actors on stage and during intermission, all the mics will be cleaned, all the stands will be sanitized, and then a new seven group of actors comes out for the second half of the show. Certainly a different way of doing things. <laughs> but so let's give our, our audience um, some of the details of the uh, winds and times and things like that, that that the play is going to be presented. Sure, it's at 7.30 here in the auditorium on November 6th and 7th. So that's Friday and Saturday. Okay. It will also be streaming. So oh, for sweet. streaming, go to the Fairmont Theater website. It's fairmonttheater.org, and that's theater spelled R-E. Okay, T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E. Correct. Kind of, I don't know if that's the theater way or the French way or the... It's a British way. The British way, all right, <laughs> all right, the British way, great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, I think uh, John Gentry, our, our facilities manager, is gonna give us a little bit of background on, on how um, people are gonna be able to watch the show, um, both a uh, little bit in person and then, then streaming as well. So thank you so much, Ryan. Best of luck um, as you guys open the show. I think it's gonna be probably wonderful as all of the shows are here at Fairmont High School. So we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for your time. And now joining me is John Gentry. John is the Performing Arts Facilities Manager for the district. And welcome, John. Great to have you here. Hi, it's good to be here. And so we just chatted a little bit with Ryan about kind of the, the fall play, uh, what it's going to be. And it's, it's going to be um, just, just a great way of, of presenting um, the talents of our students. I'm going to have you talk a little bit about, from a facility standpoint, how are we going to make this happen? Um, you know. It, we obviously can't fill a 900 person auditorium, right. but how are you going to um, bring an audience in safely and how, how are we gonna make that happen um, for our students up here on stage? Yeah, uh, so the first benefit is that we are doing the live stream. So we can split up the audience that way. Uh, I assume there'll be many people that choose to do the live stream just on their own uh, accord, which is great. Uh, so for the people that do want to be here, we have the auditorium marked off. Um, I marked it with uh, just pieces of green tape to say, hey, this seat is okay to sit in. Uh, so those are all at least six feet apart. And the number of seats that are marked here is the 15% capacity okay. uh, that is in the, the regulations that we're um, abiding by now. So that is 138 seats. So once we hit 138 tickets sold in person, everybody else will have to be on the live stream to view it. Okay. And how are people um, getting their tickets? Is that um, online or are they calling, stopping by? How are we doing the ticket sales? Yeah, so everything should be through that fairmonttheater.org okay. site uh, that Ryan mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, go there and all the information and links will be, will be put up there. Okay. So those 138 seats might... Uh, be prime. I, I, I think we're going to have a lot of people that are going to want to snag those. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit. Um, Ryan touched on uh, kind of some of the protocols that were put in place. I know you worked really hard um, this summer in preparation for the, the start of auditions and things like that. What are some of the things that you've done to make sure that, that um, our students are safe and that those of you kind of working with the students are safe as well so that we could, we could actually make this happen? Yeah. It's a much smaller technical crew than normal. Uh, so during the show, we only have four students running technical positions and they're all pretty spread out. Uh, there's only two back in the tech booth uh, and that booth is you know, 18 feet wide. So they're able to sit at the sound and lighting consoles separate from each other. And then aside from that, the other two folks are backstage on opposite ends of the stage. Okay. So we kind of have dual stage managers that way. Um, Ryan mentioned that we're sanitizing the microphones mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. We actually have two totally separate sets of microphones. Okay. So uh, each actor has their own mic that isn't reused for anybody else. We have the benefit this year, uh, since we're doing a much more minimal set, 
of you know, having separate build days from technical rehearsal days. Okay. So the crew of kids that's here uh, to build the set is here on separate days from the rest of the cast. So we're able to take up the whole stage and scene shop and everything uh, to spread out and do what we need to do. Okay. And of course, this is a huge stage. There's there's lots of lots yeah. of lots of feats on right. this stage. So we're <laughs> able to kind of separate the kids out. So what? kind of went through your mind um, from, I mean, you, you had, we had to listen to um, what the governor mandated in terms of, of the use of performing arts facilities. And then we obviously needed to take into consideration, um, you know, our, our own kind of um, requirements for students and staff and, and anybody in our buildings. Kind of what went through your mind as you were trying to plan something so different in such an unusual time um, versus kind of what you've done in the past, say, you know, with spring musicals or, or past plays and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I think like anybody else right now in this time, I had a few different phases of thoughts that I went through. The first was, I wonder if we're going to have anything, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so as we got familiar with the guidelines and, and how we could operate within that, uh, like Ryan mentioned, they started dreaming about what could be different. So from my standpoint, it was a very similar thought process of how does the technology integrate with this to make it um, enjoyable for people mm -hmm. to, to consume, enjoyable for the kids to be a part of. Uh, there's actually in this show, even though it's a smaller tech crew, uh, we're re relying a lot on um, some other types of technology that we haven't normally uh, okay. leaned on as much. I mean, it's always been present before, mm -hmm. but that is, we're kind of having a singular focus on the technology with the sound effects and this being a radio play, there's no acting or moving about the stage, so the quality of the sound is of the utmost importance. Sure. Um, you know, lighting is all different because nobody's moving around. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've really been able to focus with uh, some students that already had experience in those areas and some new ones. Yeah, so we've been able to really explore that a, a little bit differently. So for me, it's, among other things, it's really a glass half full kind of situation yeah. to say, how, how do we get to learn about things that we haven't before? Yeah, which is kind of neat, um, a, a great opportunity, like so many things that we're finding during these unusual times. Yeah. And talk a little bit about the live streaming and how you make that happen. I think everybody's starting to learn, you know, different terminologies. We've, we've always heard about live streaming, but maybe <laughs> never um, a high school play. So how, how does that happen and how, how does somebody uh, jump on that live stream? What, what's that going to look like when they open up their laptop and, and click on the, the theater mm -hmm. um, website? So it's through a third party website. The first thing with live streaming um, is that the organizations who own the rights and royalties to these shows have opened up the right for us to be able to, um, cool. to stream that and to put the content out there. So uh, they're kind of meeting us in the middle and saying, we know this is a different time. We're gonna let you do this. So uh, when you go through the Fairmont Theater website, the link to buy the tickets to the live stream will take you to a third party website um, who is hosting the stream. Okay. Uh, so you will have to create a free account there. It's just a username and password. Uh, you'll buy your tickets and then you go to that same link when it's the day of the show. Okay. And they'll just <laughs> open it up. It'll be right there for them. Uh, so to pull that off on our end, um, behind the camera is somebody you don't see right now. Uh, Mrs. Hutchins is, um, and her students are going to be running all the camera work okay. for that. So we'll have some students involved in that side of the tech through the interactive media department. So hopefully the goal is, is that it's a uh, really professional looking live stream, multiple camera angles, um, really good, crisp, clean audio. Uh, so I'm excited about that side of it too. It's gonna be exciting. And, and, and our behind the scenes crew has been here. We, we've all kind of been a team working here uh, ever since kind of the pandemic hit with lots of different things. So I, yeah. I'm so glad you gave a shout out to Laura and, and her crew because um, we, we couldn't do any of this without them for sure. Absolutely. So um, the show must go on and it will, <laughs> the 6th and 7th of November, yep. correct? 7.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. So somebody joining um, the live stream would pop on there at 7.30, just like if they were sitting here in a chair in the auditorium, correct? 
Yep. All right. And you can eat popcorn on your couch at home, which you right. can't do you would here. Be, you wouldn't be allowed to do that here. You can have <laughs> popcorn and a, and a pop or an iced tea or something and enjoy the show. So thank you so much. And thanks for everything um, that I know you have done, all your efforts to make sure that this can happen and that it can be done safely for everybody involved. So really appreciate all your efforts. Of course. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Again, our Fairmont Theater Department will present Vintage Hitchcock, a radio play on November 6th and 7th at 7.30 p.m. You can go to the Fairmont Theater website to purchase your tickets, both for an in-person, uh, for a limited number of seats that are available, and for a live stream that will allow you to watch it from the comforts of your own homes.